Hi everyone, welcome to Hydra One. Your case presenters will be Daniel A. Nelson, Luke Hedger, and Jared Bergeron. Just a brief overview, the 1998 Energy Competition Act authorized Ontario Hydro to partition its company into two distinct entities. The first is called Ontario Power Generation and it's responsible for creating power using hydroelectrical nuclear wind turbines and fossil fuels. The second is called Hydro One and it's responsible for distributing, monitoring, and managing the flow of electricity to consumers. In 2002, Hydro One's IPO failed due to public outcry towards paying its top management private sector salaries. The blowback from this ordeal left the firm with a tainted reputation. Also during 2002, Ontario Energy Board limited the amount of money Hydro One could charge its customers for the next five years. The pricing prohibition resulted in Hydro One cutting its workforce instituting a hiring freeze, implementing cost-saving measures across the board, and placing efforts to upgrade its aging equipment on hold. In 2005, the depth of these layoffs, cutbacks, and harsh working conditions ultimately led remaining employees to strike for 18 weeks. Reputational damage discouraged workers from entering the field. This combined with an aging workforce created labor shortages. In 2006, Hydro One was presented with additional challenges. During this election year, the company was called upon to spearhead Canada's energy conservation movement. New policies to slow climate change or reduce carbon emissions would most certainly increase Hydro One's overhead. Additionally, regulations in the Toronto Stock Exchange would, fo would force the company to conform to corporate governance requirements and regulation standards. The company chose to preemptorily create a comprehensive ERM program. Hydro One's current position reflects the success of its ERM program. In the early 2000s, it could dedicate a few million dollars to improve its infrastructure. Four years later, Hydro One was able to finance a billion dollars of new physical capital. Before Hydro One initiated its ERM program, departments functioned as independent silos. Today, each of those segments operate cohesively as evidenced by Hydro One's investment department and risk team jointly working together to allocate resources. In the past, Hydro One regarded customer satisfaction with a take it or leave it mentality. Presently, due to the cultural change brought on by its ERM program, it conducts its services under a customer first ethos. The firm strives for a 90% customer satisfaction rate high productivity, an A credit rating, top quartile for reliable transmission and distribution, efficiency without accidents, and to be the best utility company globally. As of late, a critical risk Hydro One faces involves building out lines for the Bruce to Milton project. This expansion has encroached on the lands of First Nation people and brought up right-of-way issues. Vulnerabilities to the power grid from hackers and other threats are a significant concern. Installing smart meters on 1.3 million homes and devising strategies and processes to accommodate personal alternative, alternative energy generation on an overtaxed power grid have become two of Hydro One's newest challenges. To accomplish these feats, Hydro One must deploy a two way communications network with complete transparency. While these challenges appear daunting to Hydro One, the use of smart meters offers an opportunity to anticipate cash inflows. How is Hydro One's strategy and the threats it faces related? Not hundreds of risks, but all risks within an enterprise-wide scope. Instead of focusing on a broad array of risks, the ERM process enabled employees company-wide to identify and prioritize the most strategic and catastrophic risks. Fraser's Enterprise Risk Management Program consisted of three phases. For the first phase, he gathered 60 to 80 risks from management. He narrowed it down to about 8 or 10 and then conducted workshops using the Delphi method to allow management to submit which threats they thought were most important and why. They ranked these threats on a scale of one to five, five being the most severe for perceived impact and also by probability of occurrence. Organizing this into a grid to visually identify the most pressing matters. Phase two consisted of interviews with management to see where the company stood in terms of protecting itself from specific threats and what they needed to do in order to prepare for those risks. Since they're in such a fluid environment, 
One important aspect of these meetings was identifying if the threat had changed. Phase three was annual meetings that were held in order to identify how they would allocate resources to address the risks at hand. Fraser used risk-based investment appraisal and planning to organize the priority of financial resource allocation. During the meetings, engineers would use information to write up initial assessments and to provide managers with a practical analysis of risk mitigation. Other departments were allowed to chime in and contest the assessments with their own challenges. This allowed management to spot possible issues with the proposed projects. This design of ERM increased communication across departments in the firm. It allowed the most important threats to be confronted when they might have been previously ignored. With everyone contributing, it created a collective understanding of risk in the company, using all intellectual resources to confront problems allowed for better planning. The risk-based asset allocation provided funds where they belonged. Sometimes divisions are provided funds because they essentially hold more power, not because they're a priority. A key to the effectiveness of the ERM program is that it allowed everyone to participate in evaluating risks. It provided a platform for individuals to voice their opinion and provide their viewpoint on a problem that they have experience with. Asking managers to be responsible for risk is a cause for concern because they could become so risk averse that they want to mitigate even the smallest concerns. The process used allows other departments to address these concerns and invalidate them when necessary. Managers were encouraged to disclose risks in order to confront them when necessary. Otherwise, they weren't provided with the resources to do anything about it. The ERM programs at JPL and Hydro One had a lot of similarities. Managers were able to rank threats by severity and probability of occurrence. They encouraged communication across departments to challenge or assist in mitigating threats. Gentry Lee and John Frazier each met frequently with their senior management to monitor risks. Some differences were JPL identified threats and how they specifically impacted their department. Hydro One identified threats and then judged how they would impact the company as a whole if they were to occur. The enterprise risk management programs at JPL and Hydro One caused the businesses to be more balanced as a whole. It created a more structured approach to risk management for the firms they are allocating resources more appropriately, deciding which department should get funds by logical reasoning and not by power. They were using all of their resources to benefit the company. A hugely overlooked aspect of this program is the flow of information. Gentry Lee encouraged employees to participate in intellectual confrontation. Fraser allowed similar challenges from different departments when projects were being presented. This communication allowed management to identify possible issues with the projects.
while Gentry Lee and John Frazier both implemented enterprise-wide risk management programs, the way that they went about it was different in a few key areas. When looking at the background of both gentlemen, you can see why this may have been the case. Gentry Lee was a chief systems engineer with years of experience working in this environment and had many successful missions prior to his role in the implementation of his ERM program. Frazier, on the other hand, was the head of the internal audit committee at Hydro One before assuming the role of chief risk officer after 30 years with the company. Both men encouraged discussion of key risk topics and accepted criticism from their peers, but Frazier took it a step further and routinely held one-on-one -on -one meetings with key risk owners, which helped ensure the effectiveness of the program. Gentry Lee designed his ERM program with more of a top-down approach. This ultimately led to different project departments being siloed from each other, resulting in less communication overall than John Frazier's. Lee held brief and mission-specific meetings with his engineers to explore the poss possible risks associated with each project. Frazier's program was much more inclusive in the sense that all employees across the organization understood all of the key risks associated with the firm. This approach led to a much more collective understanding of the program, which helped ensure that all employees fully bought in. John Frazier's decentralized approach to risk management at Hydro One helped facilitate communication across all levels of the organization, which led to a better understanding of the overarching risks of every facet of the organization. This helped provide innovative solutions to problems that senior management may not have been aware of. His determination and willingness to include all members of the organization created a work environment where both employees and management could maintain a certain level of trust, which was crucial to the program's success. Gentry Lee's program created more power distance between himself and his employees and forced the employees to justify their positions, leading to a much more hostile work environment. We believe Hydra One should look into forming a captive insurance company which could help the organization in a variety of ways. Forming a captive would allow Hydra One to save money on premiums and only pay out when an actual claim arises. It would also help them gather more data on events occurring in the workplace and they could use that information to establish more efficient and safer business practices. Often insurance companies inflate premiums because of the costly nature of the claims process, but by creating a captive, Hydro One would have full control over this claims process, which would help streamline the event and provide access for reinsurance companies to transfer some of the risk for a lot less money. One of the best ways to measure the value created by the ERM program introduced by John Frazier would be to look at how it impacted their weighted average cost of capital. After the implementation of the program, Hydro One saw their bond rating increase due to the newly perceived confidence from both shareholders and the general public. This confidence allowed investors and banks to be willing to lend Hydro One more money with less interest, leading to a more profitable corporation, which also allowed them to take on projects that they might not have been able to had they not had this investor and public confidence. Overall, implementing an enterprise risk management program enables the company to utilize the collective insight of employees from every department in the organization, which leads to innovative solutions that might have been missed otherwise. By incorporating risk management into the strategic process, businesses can stay a step ahead of the ever-changing technological and regulatory environments. We believe this will be the measure of success for companies across all industries for years to come. Thank you for your time and we hope you enjoyed our presentation.